Today, I'm going to show you how the Giants can leave this Browns game with a W. Let's get straight to business, and I'm about my business. Once a Giant, always a Giant. For me, it's only a Giant. So first off, I want to thank each and every person that is subscribed to the channel. We hit 10 thousand subscribers man that is crazy work crazy stuff to look at my screen and see ten thousand to see five figures under my sub count is crazy to me so again appreciate you all i'm gonna have to find out some way to celebrate this but ten thousand subscribers is an amazing feeling and i hope you all can continue to keep rocking with me and let's get straight to this so it's just as simple as the Giants have to win the key matchups on Sunday. That's that's really what it comes down to. They have got to figure out a way to win these key matchups. You got the biggest matchup, which is Miles Garrett and Andrew Thomas. Oh, yeah. Two of the best players in the NFL at their position, Miles Garrett and Andrew Thomas. I cannot wait to see this battle. I cannot wait to see Andrew Thomas, who I think is at worst the third best left tackle in the NFL. I think Miles Garrett is also at worst, probably the third best edge rusher in the NFL. And this is going to be a battle. Now, looking at the Browns pass rush in general, they're 25th in total pressures, but they're second in sacks. So that shows that when they get pressure, they sack the quarterback which lends itself to two sort of different points. The first point is maybe the Browns can get five or six sacks and that kills five or six drives. Or maybe the Browns get five or six sacks and it doesn't kill a drive. So that's something we're going to have to pay attention to this week. Are they going to be able to get consistent pressure? And are we going to be able to take advantage of that? And like I said, that starts all with Andrew Thomas versus Miles Garrett. Now, Miles Garrett hasn't practiced for the last two days. He could be a guy that might not even play. But you also look at Zadarius Smith there. They have some other guys behind him. But if Miles Garrett is playing, it is absolutely full out. Make sure that you get a hat on Miles Garrett. Make sure he's chipped and you got the all pro left tackle blocking him because Miles Garrett can ruin a game by himself. He's what we want from Brian Burns and Kayvon Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence, which is my next topic. Brian Burns, Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau have got to run this game. They have got to dominate the line of scrimmage. If they don't, if they don't dominate this line of scrimmage, you're going to see more of the same. You're going to see Deshaun Watson sit back there and throw a ton of short passes and just slowly matriculate his way down the field and it's going to be more frustration for us Giants fans. So Dex, Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, they have got to win. Now Dexter Lawrence has been a terror. He's been an absolute terror all year long so far, but we need much more. We need much more. Burns and Thibodeau have gotten close on some sacks. They've even gotten pressure last game but they just have not been able to get there. And no matter if you're getting chipped, if you're getting doubled, if you're a guy like Brian Burns, if you're a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau, one is a person who we traded a second and a fifth round pick for, and we're paying them $30 million. And the other is a person we spent a top five pick on. So they need to rise above the doubles, rise above the chips and control the game. They both have the talent to do it. They have to do it consistently. So something else that I noticed is Deshaun Watson is someone that he's someone that holds the ball forever. Going back to when Deshaun Watson was this amazing quarterback for the Houston Texans, he held the ball forever. He always had a ton of sacks. People blamed his offensive line. And then after a while, when they saw Laramie Tunsil doing his thing, they said, Deshaun Watson kind of holds onto the ball for a long time. And that may be affecting these sack numbers. So he's always going to hold on to the ball. He is fifth longest in the league for time to throw. Jaden Daniels is the quickest in all of football. Jaden Daniels is getting rid of the ball as soon as he touches that. So that kind of shows you why that pressure isn't coming through. Darnold is 10th and longest to throw. So Darnold had a week where he sort of 
was about average and holding on to the ball against us, maybe a little bit quicker because they were sort of moving quickly. But also, Donald last week, he got some time to make some big throws downfield, so that may be skewed. But coming into this game, Deshaun Watson is going to hold on to this football longer than any quarterback we've seen this year. So I think this is our first time that we'll actually see this pass rush be unleashed because we got an offense that we're going against where they actually try to work their way down the field. And it's not just all quick things. So I'm excited to see that. Now, Jedrick Wills looks like he's going to play. Now, he is coming in banged up. So he's coming in this game banged up. We can absolutely not. We just cannot come into this game and not win that matchup. First off, he's banged up. Second of all, he's sort of been struggling lately. Jedrick Wills was a tackle that I really wanted. I think he came out the same year as Andrew Thomas, and I wanted Jedrick Wills over Andrew Thomas. And he started off pretty good, but he has not been able to take that step to being a dominant tackle on a consistent basis, and he struggled, and he's had injuries. So again, Brian Burns, you're making $30 million a year. I don't even care if you think Jedrick Wills is a good tackle. He cannot dominate you and hold you to two or three pressures this game. I want a monster game out of Brian Burns. The paycheck says so. It just is what it is. I hate I hate to do it. I hate to count the money, but you have got to rise above what is normally expected when you're getting paid as much as an NFL quarterback. I just believe that has to be the truth because honestly, Brian Burns is getting paid more than our franchise quarterback should be getting paid. So just let that sink in. Also, when this defensive line lines up, they have got to be the reason that these teams do not run the ball. Dex has got to hold up, which he always, I know he will. And the two edges have got to continue to hold up as well. They have got to find a way to stop the run. And that includes the supporting cast. That means Nacho. That means Chapman. They have got to stop the run. Because if they allow Jerome Ford to rip off some big carries, that is going to open up the entirety of the offense. If they don't figure this out, we will lose this game. Let's take a quick break to cover this week's pick'em sheet for Underdog Fantasy. Take a look at the sheet I have. CeeDee Lamb is your week's free pick. Again, I decided to go higher than 187 and a half pass yards for Daniel Jones. I decided to go higher for Jerome Ford than 51 and a half rushing yards. The Giants have not done a good job stopping the run. I decided to go higher than 203 and a half passing yards for Will Levis. I think he's got that potential to do that. Deshaun Watson, I decided to go higher than 202 and a half passing yards. Make these picks fast, folks, because Deshaun Watson's total has gone up a couple of yards since I originally added him to my pick sheet. So they're upgrading these because they're thinking, you know, this, this might be a little bit too easy for folks. Anyway, if you love fantasy football as much as I do, and you do want to participate in things like weekly pickums and other fantasy games inside of Underdog Fantasy, use code Diggy to get back up to $1,000 in bonus cash for making a deposit. Quick and easy, use code Diggy. So what are your next biggest matchups? Denzel Ward, Malik Neighbors it is, is a really big matchup in this game. If Denzel Ward is healthy, which he's been struggling with injuries. The Browns injury report is absolutely long as, as a Ruby Tuesdays, as a Cheesecake Factory menu. It is a very, very long list. And Denzel Ward, if he comes into this game not banged up, not hampered in any way, and he performs as well as he can against Malik Neighbors and shuts him down, the Giants offense is dead in the water. So Malik Neighbors versus Denzel Ward is an absolute key matchup. He's going to be the best cornerback that Malik faces by far. Now, Malik is coming off of an 18 target, 10 catch, 127 yard, and a touchdown game. Now, Malik could have had more yards. If you take a look at the tape, he could have had more. But he has not necessarily gone against anybody that you would say is a dominant cornerback. And when you take a look at things, Stephon Gilmore, former defensive player of the year, really good player, may still end up having a great season, but coming into that game, 
Stephon Gilmore was looked at a guy looked at as a guy that had issues because he was getting older. Now he had a great year last year, but people were not thinking that he would come in and be that same caliber all pro corner that he's been in his career so far. But Malik Neighbors going up against Denzel Ward is going to be a key matchup. It's going to be his biggest matchup to date. And if he can win that, we're going to start to, to really see some buzz for Malik Neighbors being rookie of the year because that is a tough matchup. He's good at the line. He can play man. He can play zone. He's physical. He can do it all. Also, when he's not on Denzel Ward, he's got Greg Newsom to deal about. So he's going to have to deal with some great corner play. And this is going to be huge for the Giants offense. Can we win the Malik Neighbors versus Denzel Ward dash Craig Newsom matchup? If we can, that really gives us some fuel towards getting that first win. Now, also, you got Amari Cooper on the other side. And Amari Cooper, I was surprised. Now, I haven't gotten to see both Browns games. And I knew he was struggling. But when I took a look at the stats... Five catches for Amari Cooper for 27 yards in two games. That just doesn't seem right. And I don't want to be the game that Amari Cooper finally has his big game. I don't want, I don't want to be that team. So we got to tighten up. Deontay Banks, week one against Justin Jefferson, held him to a pretty, a pretty silent game. Not silent, but quiet game. Now he had a big catch down the left sideline where it was just an amazing throw from Sam Darnold. And then he had a nice slant from Sam Darnold, which was another amazing throw. And Deontay Banks had pretty much shadow coverage. He His hand was about, I mean, this, this close to swatting the pass away. So Deontay Banks was there, but he just ended up giving that up. The next week against Terry McLaurin, Terry McLaurin pretty much did nothing. Now you could say, is that because of the offense they're running? But either way, he did his job. Terry McLaurin did not have even a, an, a decent or regular game. So if Deontay Banks can continue that level of play that he did last week and tightens up on Amari Cooper, you also got Jerry Judy to deal with. But those two, if those two, whichever one they decide to put Deontay Banks on, I think it would be Amari Cooper. But if he takes one of those receivers away, I think that makes things a lot easier. Now, my problem is they do have Njoku, they do have Elijah Moore, they do have their running backs. Can we be good enough at the linebacker position and at the safety position and cover these tight ends and cover these slot receivers? Shout out to Andrew Phillips, who I just made a video on. If you haven't seen that, check that out. But if we can be good in the slot and Deontay Banks can do his job, That makes things very difficult. You got better coverage. You got the pass rush coming in, everything working together. You guys get where I'm going with that. Now, out of Amari Cooper, 17 targets this year, he's got 243 total air yards. So he's been targeted downfield, but he just cannot connect. So he's dropped a pass, Watson has missed them, and we cannot be that first team that comes out and says, we're going to let Amari Cooper get comfortable. We're going to let Amari Cooper catch the ball early and dominate because he's a guy that can go for 260 if you leave him alone. So all in all, the Giants have got to win their matchups at these key positions that I highlighted. These are positions of strength for us, I believe. You got Andrew Thomas. You got Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau, Brian Burns. You got Deontay Banks. You got Malik Neighbors. These are strengths. If the Giants can't go to this game and capitalize on their strengths against a team that is very, very injured, then they will absolutely not win this game. The season is looking very bleak right now, and I definitely can't pencil in a win. So whoever wins the most of these matchups that I highlighted is probably going to win the game. That being said, if I had to pick a score, I would pick the Browns 20 to 13. I'm concerned about the run game. I'm concerned about the middle of the field, not necessarily Andrew Phillips, but the linebackers and the tight ends. I'm concerned about all of those things. So for that reason, I'm going to go 2013. We cannot, we have to make them earn it. We got, we got to make them earn it before we just reward them 
with these wins, and I hope the Giants can prove me wrong this Sunday. Remember, if you use code Diggy, you'll get up to $1,000 in bonus cash if you make a deposit in Underdog Fantasy. Interested in anything broad NFL, check out Diggy's Huddle. It's coming out every single Friday. Having a lot of fun with that. And as always, I will be live for the game Sunday, 1 p.m. Jump in the stream. Always try to have a lot of fun. Thank you.